to my channel. Uh, this is the Motorcycle Rescuer and I am the Motorcycle Rescuer. Uh, we've not got much to do here today. We've got our moped that we need to do some pre-MOT checks on. Um, I'll show you Jake Corb's new project over in the corner. Some people are interested in that, mainly because he's a miserable lazy git. Um, and then we'll pull out the Harley and we'll pull out the CB250 later, get it warmed up, make sure all of our bikes are charging and warm while we're in, uh, you know, going throughout the winter. Uh, Pre-MOT checks, really important. You'd be amazed. You think your bike's perfect, you're ready to go to MOT, and then if the horn don't work or something silly. So check your horn, your indicators, your lights, your high beams and stuff like that. Um, your average Joe can't easily check your shocks, I get that, but give them a bounce and if they're overly wet, then you're in trouble. This pitting could be an issue. Could be, I don't think it is, it's smoother than it looks, but it could be. Now there's no actual um, residue on this shock, so they're not causing any problems to the flow at all. If you were really worried, this side's better because it's not in the travel area. If you were really worried about that, you can sneakily put on some tubing over your shocks. They don't take off the tubing. Uh, that is if you think it's safe. I'm not encouraging anyone who's got stupidly weeping shocks to do that. That's if you've got a bit of pitting and you've cleaned it and, and made it better. Check your brakes, make sure the brakes don't touch the handlebar, that's the first check they do, they pull it back, it shouldn't touch the handlebar, that's, I can get that close but that's a drum, this one's more important, pull it back, it shouldn't touch the handlebar, that's great, and then as I said you check all of the, uh, the high beams and stuff, uh, the seat has to lock guys, if your seat isn't locked because somebody's popped it at some point, get a, a, um, a strap down, one of them uh, bungee cords, and you strap it down for its MOT, you just put the strap along there, that is legally passable then. And the last thing is make sure you've got air in your tyres, I think my rear tyre is a little low, it might even have a slow puncture, I'm going to have to look into that, because I think I put air into it not long ago, didn't I? So I'll keep my eye on that, but um, that looks a little low. Other than that, um, they do a splash check with the... Let me show you, they do a splash check with the fuel cap, so they open this up and they rock the bike left and right and if any fuel splashes out then you're in trouble, it's normally that seal there that causes the problem. Uh, I think that, that will be fine, nothing should splash out. Make sure that's nice and tight and actually to an extent don't overfill it, uh, just go halfway or something, basically give them less things to find. Although, obviously, we want your bike in perfect working order. Uh, make sure you warm your bike up. I had someone message me yesterday telling me that I rev my bikes too much. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to roast you too much. But um, you can't really rev your bikes too much, guys. You know, you have a red line. If you're hammering off the red line for a certain amount of time, you may cause your bike some issues. Other than that, anything under your red line, you absolutely aren't hammering your bike too much. And that was on um, a moped or something, actually. Yeah, I guess the, um, the lesson here is don't message me silly things. You know, if you watch the channel and enjoy it, message me, we'll have a chat. I'll even help you out with your bikes. Don't tell me I rev the bike too much. That's ridiculous. It makes you look silly. But I'm always here to help you guys learn. The um, bobber at the moment isn't selling. It's up for £1,100. I've been offered a £1,000 twice. And I've declined it twice from two different people. And, and I'll explain later. I think I'll explain a bit more later as to why. Um, but I'm, just, I'm not accepting any offers under 11 for this bike. There's Chinese bikes out there, 125s, that are going for £1,300, £1,400. I'm not letting my classic 
125 go for less than 11 classic 250 honda go for less than 11 i'm very happy to hold on to it until um you know march april when people start buying again so that's it let me do the checks i actually talked about bit of a horn left indicator left indicator right indicator Ooh, hang on a minute are all four indicators on yes they are what's going on there this is why this is why we do pre mot checks guys oh that's interesting look so you go left here if you don't cancel the left and you go right there if you go left first and don't cancel you get all four that's brilliant um that's okay you can use that as a hazard light let's see if it works the other way look at that in fact it says hazard light there look that is class um brilliant i'm gonna chuck some air in the back so i'm gonna ride this to the mot and hopefully fingers crossed it passed and if we're really 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 lucky we'll meet lisa today maybe off camera and we'll see her vespa i've kind of told her now that i'm only really going to hold this bike today i can't really wait much longer because i just can't have ready bikes here in the garage taking up space and time Fingers crossed, let's hope this passes. I'll let you know. So, it looks like I spoke too soon. All right, what's going on? So we start it up like we did. It idles fine. Give it some revs. It's okay. Give it some more. It's choking itself. So there's something, something going on. It will either be fuel starvation or air starvation, I'm sure. So let me pop the bucket seat out, have a quick look. If I can do this in half an hour or so, I can still get to an MOT. This is exactly why you do your pre-MOT checks. And it's actually good that it happened now because I could have handed this bike over and we could have had this problem. It's obviously not a carb problem in regards to the insides because that's a brand new carb. The only thing I could suggest is that the jetting on the inside isn't right we maybe should have switched to the others but I doubt it it was the same car so we'll see Check the fuel suction hose. Just in case. I put it on last week, so it should be fine. I'm going to pop one side off, check it. I'm going to suck through it, make sure there's enough fuel flow, and we'll try that. If the revs pick up, then we know it's a suction fuel line slash fuel pump issue at this stage. Uh, not sure what else it could be. We can also try spraying in 
seeing if the revs pick up or, or go lower in case any of these connectors are bad down here. So I can test the suction system guys by sucking on it. Um, I used to get Jake to do all the sucking, but then he disappeared. So uh, I have to do all the sucking myself. So not a suction issue at this stage. Now we can't we can't rule out. I don't like this line here. Um, I think it's too big. I think it's probably better off just going back there and straight to there. So I'm going to change that fuel filter for a new one. Jake left me hundreds um, a while back. The other thing is I nipped this up last week. Maybe it needs to face down a bit more or something not sure so let me uh i'm going to play with this area i'm going to put a new filter in try and shorten the hose a touch try and make it a bit more flowy so it doesn't go down and up i mean to be fair that's not an issue because it's a suction system but it may just be slowing everything down and then the other thing i'm going to check is the wires under here in case there's an issue there so i need to do this check i need to do a spray check spray something in make sure it doesn't um rev itself up and then I'll check the wires for the um, choke and change this system here a little bit right let's start with the spray test I'm going to film a bit more today um, so my main two concern areas are here and here if the bike revs up there's a gap the bike dies there may be a gap no change see that this is brake cleaner guys and clutch cleaner no change um, so then we look along along here any weird gaps that we're missing no oh engine went a bit lower there and then we can try here Notice it all died down a touch there, guys. And then when that runs out... Okay. I think my next job is to take the air filter out and see if it runs a bit better. With the air filter out, it might be um, starving itself of air. So, it's not air starvation related. We've got the air filter out. So far, we've checked for air leaks and air starvation. Um, I think wiring next just in case it could be that simple I'll have a little look over these wires as well but they seem fine uh, spark possibly but I don't think so side stand switch is fine because that's working keep going guys keep going I'm gonna change the this bit next the uh, fuel filter <clears throat> I'm gonna change the dynamics of this area I'm gonna put it down a little bit make that shorter and neaten that up so um, no change I've done all the changes I said slightly um, rerouted things uh, I haven't done the wiring yet I am going to go there let's just see we're still not revving properly half rev half, quarter revs fine we choke out I'm gonna check these wires just in case under here the choke wires but I don't think it's a choke problem I think it's a car problem I think somehow the new carb has been bunged up already potentially something left in the line maybe but it's high hopes but because it's sat all week maybe something got in there and clogged it up so this will be a quick carb clean if these all right guys hopefully uh, you can see me okay so this is the carb we just took off. 
Um, my first thoughts are that something got in here and bungled it up, either you know in the manufacturing plant or or from the crap that was left in there. Uh, it, it's not it's not highly likely actually that one, but it's worth a quick check to see if anything obvious sticks out, and then if. If we can, it may be worth switching the original jetting across, as long as I can clean it and uh, find it, switching the um, original jetting. But saying that, this ran very well last week, so I think it somehow clogged itself up. And caused problems. There you go. One, two, three, four. So, we'll take the bowl off. Um, people ask me about carb cleans all the time. And uh, I feel like I, I, I don't want to show them so much because they are pretty much all the same. You take the bowls off like I'm doing now. Obviously you have to work out how to get the carb off. Four screws. Older carbs don't easily come apart like this, guys. Sometimes you have to get grips on them. definitely found our issue. This is brilliant, guys. Brilliant. What's missing? It's very dark. It's come out here. So you saw me just take the bowl off. What's missing? The main jet's missing. What has happened there? So something snapped. What was that? Where has that come from? And where is the main jet? Bloody hell, I've never, never. That is unbelievable, guys. The main jet that sits on the top, somehow sheared and busted off. I've never had this carb open, remember? And it is gone. That, where on earth can that go? It can't suck up. I've got to solve this issue. This is uh, truth seeker stuff. I reckon I just dropped it out. I reckon when I tipped it up, I dropped the main head out. Because there's no way. Because this bit here. Yeah, the main head has sheared off. Oh, I'm shocked, guys. Absolutely shocked. So, um, easy fix for me there because I just take that whole carrier out and put a new carrier and new jet in, ideally off the old carb because then I know what size it is. Oh, no, actually, I've got an identical carb up there. I'm going to put in a new holder. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. But it, it goes to show you guys. So, here should be the main jet with the flathead like this one in here and it sheared off and it it's disappeared but I think when I tipped it up a minute ago I think it fell out just the head so uh <laughs> wow it's not in there is it no absolutely crazy let me show you the new jet that I'm going to put in so guys just for ease I'll take this jet and carry out this is from um, last week's carb anyway this is the carb really I probably should have cleaned out uh, instead of buying a new one I was lazy but to be fair a can of carb cleaner costs for me around 8 to 10 quid and a carb cost 18 quid so it made sense at first obviously you know after what happening today happened then that's not ideal. What size are these? This this is the main thing I need to know, just out of curiosity. That is a 98. 98. That's kind of what I had in mind. So uh, you just we just pop this whole carrier and and main jet out like this. Look, there you go. 
I'm going to keep this cob together because all these old cob pieces are handy. So I'm going to put the, I'm going to put it back together basically. Even these bolts, these cob bolts on the bottom, they're like gold when you need one. So I like to keep them all available when I can be asked or when uh, I'm out of funds, which I am now. I will use this cob, kind of rebuild it, reclean it, reuse it. So that's great, that's still in one piece. Let's chuck a new carrier into into here. Have I loosened the old one? Yes, I have. I'll keep that in the box with the old cob. New jet and carrier goes in. Hand tight. Tiny little nip, guys. Maybe in case it, it hit the bottom or something, maybe that it sheared off somehow by hitting the bottom. And uh, my next kind of concern is that the head is in here, but it's not. It's not. You would see it. Um, I'm pretty sure it fell out when I took it apart. Um, what's amazing is this bike will go back to normal now. I can guarantee you. It was basically um, flooding itself. It was shooting in. It wasn't restricting the fuel flow into the carb. That's what a jet does. It restricts the fuel flow so it doesn't come out in one hit. It wasn't doing that. And it was flooding itself. So that all makes sense. What is really disappointing is that I've missed the MOT. Um, if I'd got this done by half 11, I would have risked it. I would have tried to get it up to them. Uh, I believe it's gone half 11. Also, I have to actually throw this back on anyway, don't I? So, But you know what? Again, I'd, I'd like the problems to happen here with me instead of with the new owner. On this, in this, on this occasion, it might have been um, Lisa. And she wakes up one morning and her bike's not running properly and that's a right pain. So, I'm going to chuck this back on. No point filming that, guys. It's the same as last week. And I can guarantee you this bike will run beautifully again. Okay guys, so I'm going to nip this bike up, I'm going to try and get it to them for an MOT. Don't do this, this is you, this is silly, you're bound to miss something and mess up, take your time. Right guys, wish me luck. For two reasons, one that I get there on time and safely, and for two late it passes. So guys, we're here, we're at Maitland Racing. This is my favorite MOT place. Um, they have taken my bike in. It ran beautifully, really, really smooth. I'm very pleased. So uh, I, my fingers are crossed that it passes today because I need to do something and switch it or get rid of it or sell it or get that stupid Vespa. So uh, fingers crossed and I'll go and get something to eat. There it is. There's the little puppy. What could possibly have gone wrong? Famous last words. Okay guys, so that went really well. Um, I quickly said before I left there, don't do this if it's you. Don't chuck something together and do a, a 30 minute drive, a 20 roughly. Um, you're really silly there. You're bound to leave some sort of cord or something off. I kind of have done enough carb changes to realise what needs doing, so I did throw it back together and I just about made MOT and it has passed with, uh, let me double check because he did mention something to me, it passed with no advisories, lovely. Um, what, uh, what he said was the rear shock seemed quite stiff. Now, he said it's not a failure thing because it's a Chinese bike and they're crap rear shocks and they always are. Um, I didn't notice it on the ride guys so I'm going to bounce the bike now and then just as a kind of token gesture I'm going to put a touch of WD in there and just see if it seems any better. So let me bounce on the bike now you guys should get a lot of enjoyment out of that and let's see if the shocks do appear to be moving or what's going on and then I'll get some WD in there and we'll see if that loosens it up and then we'll get some grease in there just in case um, because they're obviously working because they're not 
It would be stupidly bouncy if they weren't. Instead, it's stiff. So let's have a little look. Um, we have an argument with the case, but I don't, don't see, feel, or hear much of an issue there. So, but like I said, token gesture, I think we've got to touch up WD and just help loosen up in case they have got bits through it. Yeah, again, I, I don't think there's an issue there. Um, unless they loosened up, maybe. They might have been sitting, they might have loosened up. Uh, I will ap apply some actual grease to it. You see, so we're looking in here, the plunger, and in there, the actual shock. It might have seized a touch, guys. It might have got a bit stiff. But to me, it seems absolutely fine. Uh, unless it loosened up a bit. I think we're going to see the Fespa a bit later. Um, in an hour or so I don't really know what I'm gonna do with the festival I have to be honest the um, the charity funds are zero they have been zero for a while in fact I've been putting a lot of my own money into the bikes and I know that seems kind of unlikely but this year the bikes I've sold have been stupidly cheap for example that XJ 600 I sold not long ago went for 750 pounds uh, and you know and that's what people are doing the boba I've been offered a thousand pound twice by two different people and I've said no it's advertised at 1100 I, I'm going to be strict guys I'm not I'm not budging there are Chinese 125s out there for 1500 quid my CB250 is not going I'm going to be strict in fact I'm going to change the insurance from the XJ550 to the bobber and I'm going to use the bobber over winter so that the Harley don't get wet. I know that's a bit precious but uh, this is the first time in my life I've had something like that, a newish bike and I'm allowed to be a bit precious. Uh, 